Hey there and welcome. My name is Carlos Berdes and let's start talking about what is going on in the indie tabletop RPG scene. And as always, I'm not being directly sponsored by anyone mentioned here unless explicitly said or mentioned otherwise. Some links, they may be affiliate links so that they can benefit me without you costing anything extra. And all the links, they will be in the description together with some timestamps so it can jump to the point of your preference. First, we start with there is a light at the edge of the world by Mumatos, a creator from RPG C, the Southeast Asian tabletop RPG scene. This two player game is a play by post that puts you in a barren landscape with a lighthouse and your goal is to repair it. The lighthouse, not the barren land, mind you. And to top it off, there is a language barrier that prevents you to, to clearly and directly communicate to one another. In There is a Light at the Edge of the World, you also explore to learn more about the world and what other mysteries are held there. Try to repair the lighthouse or fail in communicating and return to your mysterious origin to watch the ever black seas forever. It seems like a bleak ending, if you ask me. The game is on each funding for a limited time and it already reached some of its milestones, as you could expect from a game from Mamatos, which is an amazing creator. And as you could expect from any games by Mamatos as well, it is looking marvelously. So you should check it out because not only the art, but the idea of the game, how you play it, this play by post idea and how you interact with two players. It's very interesting, very well thought, and very well put together as well. We also had the announcement of the pre-order of The Idol, an adventure by Luke Gearing, being released as the first of the Spear Witch Adventure Writer series from The Spear Witch. The Idol is an adventure for the vanilla game or for any other fantastic or historical game system. It presents to you the Idol is tell the monks that inhabit it and, and also the monks that are protecting it and its secrets. And the large open-ended dungeon beneath it all. And all the pre-orders of the ISO will ship with a complimentary copy of the vanilla game. And actually a complimentary print copy, which is the only way to get a print copy of it because the vanilla game itself will never be sold in print so it will only be available with pre-orders of the idol as part of this limited promotion and it is planned to ship or to be delivered by the fourth quarter of 2022 okay so you have still some time until it but I am not sure that the pre-order will hold up to that, so you should check it out as soon as possible. And as a submission for OSR Jam, we have the Chivalric Bromance by R. Rook Studios. It is a game about exiled LGBTQA plus knights and their queer companions living as strangers in strange lands. It doesn't use ability scores, but rather a set of tag-like systems to identify characters, talents, weaknesses, and class special abilities. So you bring the characters to life through this tag-like system, okay? Apart from the basic rules and some character creation options, the game itself, it also brings some features like uh, two simple adventures and a guideline to try and convert other OSR adventures to the system as well. It is now on each funding, so it is in beta version, and if it reaches the goal, the game will then go through an external editing, have some additional art, and an external layout as well to bring the best version of the game that is possible, and that is the goal of everyone that is working on the game. So you should check it out, you should really try and support it as well. This week, we also had the release of the Bagel Game or Bagel Game. I mean, I haven't lived in New York like Brita, so I'm not a specialist in how to say Bagel, Bagel. Uh, but the Bagel Game by Teta Chun is a game for two to four players about the truth parents lied about and uh, actually that they lied about, they continue to lie about and all of that. And also about bagels. It is inspired by the movie Everything Everywhere All at Once and the system was designed based 
on the structure of a tesseract or a kind of a four dimensional object. In the game, you play as members of a dysfunctional family, but that the family is still trying to work together against an insurmountable otherworldly external problem and while it is trying to fix the fractures that are already there in the family. It explores different interesting concepts, including multiverse hopping, which I am a great fan of it. I had already a game published with this idea and all of that, so you can really know that I like it. And also the GM authority is shared between the players, which just reinforces the ideas and the goals of the game. So it's a very interesting project and you should check it out as well. And the tabletop mentorship program is back and you have until June 19th to enroll to it. The goal of the program is to contact, to connect experienced members of the tabletop industry with people who would like some one-on-one -on -one guidance and experience for their creative goals within the tabletop scene. We already talked about the project in other episodes, but this time it's back once again, so you should check it out. You have more information in the programs page, including the link to enroll. You can check out some other people experiences with the program as well, how they liked it and how it could contribute to that to them. So it's a very interesting way to try and get some guidance. And if you think that it could benefit you, you should definitely check it out and check the the programs page actually that it has all the, the information there. On gems, this week we bring the illuminated manuscript tabletop RPG gem. The idea of this gem is to create an analogous game or related project based on illuminated manuscripts. Analogous like it's not a digital project, okay? But it's based on in illuminated manuscripts, medieval art and all of this jazz. It is true that this kind of art, it has some beauty to them. It, it can inspire you in a particular way. At least for me, it can bring some different ideas. And the gem page, it provides the full rules as well as some links to where you can find some items to inspire you and that can bring the motivation for you to try and submit something for the jam. It will run up until the end of the month, so you still have some time, but the earlier you check, the better for you and for anyone trying to create for it. And it has also some games already, pub some titles already pu published, so you can already see some things that got this kind of inspiration and even support some other indie creators. On articles and threads, this post by Nick L.S. Willem talking about prepping before narrating a session. In Prep Tools, Not Adventures, Nick gives some examples on how to approach the idea of prepping for a session and why not preparing some specific scenario might be beneficial for you and for the whole table. The article also provides some guidelines for preparing for a next session and there is also an interesting set of questions to bring it uh, in the end, like in a recap of the session. It is in the end of the article, but it also is something to bring after the session is gone and how you can then prepare better for next one and how you can improve your kind of GMing, narrating, or how you prefer to call it as well. It's an interesting read, even if it's not like that short. And if you like the video, I would say to like the damn video, share, subscribe. You know how internet works. I will see you all in my next video because you can pay me a coffee on coffee. You can buy my games on itch.io and I'll see you all in my next one. So see ya.